Hello, dear spa owner, and welcome back to Spa Business Mastery Podcast. My name is Kirsten Foss, and today I want to talk about something that is often spoken about uh, amongst other spa coaches, amongst other spa owners, and that is how we choose the business model for the spa industry. And we have two options. We can either um, hire hire or bring on independent contractors, or we can use the model of employment um, as our business model. Both have their place, both have their pros and cons, and yet I'm still seeing a lot of spa owners, and actually I'm hearing more, uh, especially in estheticians' uh, Facebook groups, that they're, they're, as employees or as independent contractors, they're confused because the owner is confusing and basically misclassifying them. So I think it's worthy of having this conversation again. Uh, I think I probably talked about it many, many, many years ago, but there's always new estheticians who are either just graduating and they've always wanted to open their business, or maybe you have been an employee for many years and you're just ready to hang your shingle on for yourself. So you will need to decide which business model is right for you. And we want to be super clear because you could get yourself into a pretty sticky situation that's really uh, um, stressful and, you know, could have some pretty big financial implications if you choose the wrong one or you choose the right one, but you behave uh, in a way that you're not supposed to in that role. All right. So let's get down to business spa owner versus independent contractor, which one is best? So definitely, if you are thinking about spa entrepreneurship, this podcast is for you. However, if you already are a spa owner, and maybe things aren't kind of working like you thought they might, this might be a conversation you need to listen to as well, because perhaps you chose one or the other, and it's just not working for you. And you're not really sure why. So let's dive in. So first of all, there are two models for the spa industry, um, employment or independent contractor. Um, And I want to just map out the pros and cons for you so that you can make the right decision um, for yourself and you're not struggling later on going, oh my gosh, what did I, what did I do? So it really all boils down to um, three things. (laughs) It's your level of control over finances, over behavior, and over kind of the relational parts. So employee benefits, life insurance, medical coverage, retirement plans. So those are the three pieces um, that will be different, whether you are deciding to go for an independent contractor model or an employment model. Let's talk about independent contractors first. In this model, you would own or lease a space that would have multiple rooms and you want to be your own boss you want to build up your own clientele but you don't want to deal with the hassles of being a an employer fair enough um so we got to make sure we are understanding both the pros and the cons here so what is you know what are the cons here well this is a really um popular business model for solo estheticians who are ready to go it on their own um you have freedom and flexibility. I'll just go back. This is really common for um, <clears throat> estheticians who want to go out on their own. And then once the solos start getting really a lot bigger, then there's this place where they're deciding to expand, um, whether they want to have employees um, because their clientele is already full, or whether they want to have their own space and not be renting in somebody else's space and be in control over uh, renting out that space. So with independent contractors, you definitely have much more flexibility. You don't have to worry about the employee employment responsibilities. There's a lot of them. So you get to be your own boss without the pressure of managing a team. Um, Because each independent contractor will take care of their own business. They are like little businesses in this space. It's not little businesses within your business. You guys are all sharing the space, but it's all separate businesses. That means that um, they have their own point of sale to cash out. That means, and and they're managing all their own money. That means that they're using their own product lines. Uh, This is is where it gets kind of messy is um, 
when you know owners are saying, well, you can sell my product line and I'll give you a commission. It also gets kind of messy when um, maybe the independent contractor uh, has a machine that the owner doesn't have or doesn't have an experience with. And all of a sudden the owner feels like they need to take a cut of that. That's not, that's, you don't have any, that's a no go. Um, an independent contractor is their own business. They are not beholden to you other than the contract for the space that was, that was signed. So they can't, you can't tell them what to do behaviorally. You, um, you know, this is, this kind of is the cons for that flexibility. You can't control their behavior, um, which means you can't control, have any quality control with services and outcomes. Let's get back to the pros <clears throat> of uh, being an independent contractor. Um, you can actually end the relationship with an independent contractor normally easier than you can with an employee, um, especially up here in Canada. We have fairly strict labor laws and it can be, you know, you really have to have all your ducks in a row and have done all the right things in your leadership and in your disciplinary process to be able to fire them and not have any legal implications as the owner. Um, so, but nor like in the States, and um, many of you are from the US watching this, um, a lot of you have states that are at will states uh, for employees, and it's very similar to the independent contractors. They're their own business, uh, and you can end that relationship much easier than you can uh, typically with some of the states that have more and the provinces that have a stronger labor laws. Um, it can save you money being an independent contractor and renting out uh, other rooms. It saves you money because you don't have the expense of payroll, huge expense. You don't have the expense of training, huge expense. Um, there's tax benefits for you and for those independent contractors. So you can still write off your space and write off your business. And so can they. Um, and you have a fixed income coming in every month with your rent. That's always really nice, especially if you know with that income and yours, you can absolutely cover um, the rent that you're paying every month or the mortgage that you're paying every month. It's a real, um, it takes a lot of pressure off and you can have a much bigger, more beautiful space um, and it can kind of have the impression that it is bigger. The other piece of having a bunch of independent contractors is that you could have aligned uh, other, other service providers that are maybe aligned with you Maybe you're a skin therapist and maybe you're not bringing in other skin therapists, but maybe you're bringing in a massage therapist. Maybe you're bringing in a lash uh, tech. And so that you kind of have this really well-rounded um, offer for the facility, but each person is separate in their own business. All right, let's talk about the big cons. And I mentioned it a little earlier here, and it's a really, really, really big con <laughs> is that you have very little control about the behavior of your independent contractors. Uh, you can't manage their quality control. You can't tell them if they're maybe not speaking to clients in a way that is professional. Um, and perhaps, you know, if one independent contractor is kind of sullying the kind of the rest of the uh, business in terms of maybe they're not doing a great job, they're starting to not get a great reputation, it's easy for that to kind of blanket the rest of the uh, businesses. So when it comes down to having this vision for your spa business, you really also need to decide how much control you need to have over it in order to make that happen. So if you don't want a huge amount of responsibility, you just want to be a sole esthetician, you have no intention of growing your team, growing a team. Um, absolutely, you know, you can stay as a business model for independent contractors, that would probably work really well for you. Um, the other con about independent contractors is that they're all their own brand. So you got a whole bunch of brands in the one facility. It's harder to have uh, kind of build up your own brand business when there's other little brands around. So it's all about focus and market positioning. Um, and the biggest, uh, one of the biggest cons in terms of oops for spa owners is that many of you guys, like I said, are misclassifying, uh, you're calling them independent contractors, but you're actually asking things of them that make them an employee. So essentially, like I know in Canada, if you are controlling their time, if you're controlling their actions, 
if you're controlling, um, like if you have those pieces of control that you want, they're an employee. It doesn't matter what you, what you, the two of you decided in your relationship, it has to be legally um, correct. Because uh, if you misclassify them and you get caught, you will have some serious uh, financial tax implications on you. And that would really, really be incredibly stressful. So I know it's kind of easy to muddy the waters in this you know, employee independent contractor piece, but be very, very clear about and keep it clear and keep it um, very delineated. All right, let's talk about employees. So the pros are you have full control over their actions and their decisions and their behaviors. That is by far the biggest reason why spot owners choose to go into an employment model. In fact, it's very common for a solo who is renting space uh, to other service providers to make the decision to go to an employee model because their independent contractors are driving them crazy. <laughs> you know, they're not as professional as they think they should be. Maybe they're not contributing to keeping the facility tidy and they're not cleaning up after themselves. So there's lots of pieces in there that get really frustrating, really old, really quick. Um, and then you realize, okay, if I want this level, if I want this level of service, of brand, of um, outcomes, I need more control over my business. So that means I do need to switch over to an employment model. Uh, another pro is your whole team are brand ambassadors. It's one brand to build in this facility. Um, the other thing that I really enjoyed about being an employer was the camaraderie, um, the connection that I had with my team. Uh, I think many of you solos could agree with me that it's really lonely. And I really do encourage that you have an SD bestie, somebody else who's a solo esthetician, maybe in a different part of the country or world that you can bounce ideas off and support each other that way. Cause man, it really is lonely um, and more difficult when you're trying to figure this out all on your own. And even just in the day to day, it's much, uh, you know, a lot of people just prefer having that um, camaraderie that they're working with during the day. I know that for us, uh, for Christian Fox Coaching and my sister company, Virtual Spa Business Management, even though we're not in the spa industry doing services, uh, we're a remote team and all of us have worked remotely on our own before and all of us really like working as a team. They're all contractors, but we kind of come together as a team. So it can be done uh, as independent contractors, as, but you kind of have to have this unicorn tree, uh, unicorn team. And I have that right now and I'm really lucky. So, um, but if you don't have a unicorn team uh, in terms of like, your independent contractors, then that's where you start getting frustrated. Um, the other thing that is really uh, a positive for having an uh, employee model is that everyone is working towards the same business goals. Um, you can't do that with an independent contractors. They're, they're their own business. So whatever you put a focus to grows, we know that. Think about your own life. Um, and so if we are focused on if, our, if we are as the leadership and the team is focused on these business goals and trained and coached on these business goals, you are a force to be reckoned with, right? Um, and the other piece is that when you, um, when you have one leadership team in an employee, employee as an employee model does, you have your ability to train and like basically recruit, train and coach on a regular basis. And that gives consistency in terms of the guest experience and outcome, which is what we all want. All right, what about the cons for employment? <laughs> it is a lot of work, huge amount of work. So that's usually why owners sometimes move over to the independent contractor model. Uh, yeah, it's less work, but as we just discussed, it has, a, it has some pretty serious downsides. So, what is, what's all the work? You got admin, you've got recruiting and hiring, you've got training, you've got ongoing coaching, you've got payroll, you've got marketing because you got to shift up your marketing. You're likely going to have to redo your website so that it reflects a team. Um, and you're going to have to pay more attention in your marketing to building up the business because there's more people to fill those, those uh, spots in your schedule. 
another really big con for employment model is how expensive it is. Labor is so expensive in the spa industry. It really is. And I, I know that most of you are trying to shift over and out of a straight commission because it's really hard to control, you know, your expense, your labor expenses. Um, but the spa industry is still a bit in flux in terms of types of compensation. Either way, it's expensive and it's a big, uh, takes out a big chunk of, um, you know, it's a big part of the cost per treatment, bigger than anything in there. <clears throat> um, you know, also having an employment model, it's, it's a slower business growth. It's a slow and steady one, but it's a slower business growth um, opportunity. It, you can't, you want to, you know, the saying is, you know, hire slow, fire fast. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's that in a nutshell. You need to take the time and the energy to, to, and commitment to creating training programs, um, to continue on coaching with them, to, you know, having one-on-one -on -one meetings, to keep them on top of their KPIs, having team meetings. It's just a lot, <laughs> right? Um, so it is, you know, I guess what I want to say about, you know, it's a slow building process. This is where some solos get confused because they think that hiring is going to solve their problems in terms of their wait list or they're turning people away. It kind of does, but it actually creates also a lot of other issues that you need to address um, for that not to be an issue at all. So it just, you know, you need to have time out for you to do consistently, like create your training program, to do your training, um, to coach them. Like it really takes six months to a year for a new employee to really hit their stride. And if you don't realize that and you don't have the cash flow for that, you could really get yourself into a jam and you could be really frustrated because you just didn't have the right expectations going in. Um, and the final kind of con of having this employment model is that some spa staff you have might not like to follow policies and procedures, like their protocols. Independent contractors, they can do whatever they want. They're their own business. You have no control over that. But if you have a specific way that you want the guest experience to be, and you want each treatment that needs to be done a specific way, and you have kind of scripts that need to be done and there's, you know, expectation that there is a skincare prescription and a home care, um, home for home care and a treatment plan. We all know if you've been an employer before, even as an employee, you probably had, might've had somebody on your team like this who just wanted to do what they wanted to do. And when it comes to being an employer, you're going to have to deal with that. Uh, it's going to be uncomfortable. And most likely if that, if you have an existing staff member, or an independent contractor that you know might want to go into employees, they're you can't do anything. If they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it. It just means that the two of you are no longer in alignment, and it's probably time for them to move on and for you to start recruiting and hiring for more aligned people. But you know that can be a con, but in, I feel like it's actually a pro because if you're expecting the team to follow procedures and policies. Um, you want the people out that don't want to play nice with everybody and with the business, right? All right, so I've laid out the pros and cons for both. I'm really curious. I know many of you have had experience with both. I've even seen some of you go from uh, employment model, got absolutely fed up with it, and went back to solo, not necessarily as, a, as an independent contractor, not necessarily keeping the space and filling it with independent contractors, but just going back to be an independent contractor them, themselves, because it's just more simple. But today was really about, you know, if you're thinking about being a spa owner, independent contractor, employer, which one is better for you, you really just need to know all of these pros and cons, then get really clear about what do you want from your career? Is it fulfilling for you to be a leader? Or do you just prefer, you just want to kind of do your own thing uh, and they can do their own thing. So this is what I mean about deciding how you want to um, work in your career. And that doesn't mean that you can't change your mind down the road. So maybe you start off with independent contractors and then you realize, nah, this isn't quite working for me. And I feel a little bit more confident and stronger. And I, I think I'm ready to move this into an employment model. So 
really the bottom line here is I don't want you to get yourself into a pickle <laughs> financially, emotionally, uh, being an entrepreneur is stressful enough. We don't need to add these complications. It just means we need to do some research before we make a decision. So I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any comments, if you would like to share what your experience has been as an employer or as, um, you know, somebody who's hired in, or brought on independent contractors and what your experience has been, I'd love to hear about it. You can leave a comment for wherever you are watching from, or you can email me at Kirsten at KirstenVoss.com. That's it for me today. Um, we will be taking a bit of a break in January. Normally we have two podcasts. Uh, we might, I might do one, um, but for the most part, we you'll see a little bit of our content being repurposed uh, just so that some of our team can have a break after the Christmas holidays. Okay, have a wonderful holiday season, my friends, and we will chat in the new year.